a busy night of action tonight gets underway with Sandy Ryan, who smashed her way through the first three opponents that she had of her professional career last year. She's looking great. And tonight, she takes another step up in class with her first 10-rounder, and it's against a former two-weight world champion in Erica Farias. This is the definition of it. Erica Farias has been the distance on 16 occasions, a former two-weight world champion. If you've seen her recent fights, you'll know still has plenty to offer at world level, even against the very best. She fought hard against Jess McCaskin in two close contests, had much success. She buzzed Michaela Meyer early as well. That was down at 130, of course, but Meyer a giant at the weight and stylistically would be similar to the kind of early patterns here because she too is sharp on the jab, tall, rangy. But Barrios, whilst she's got the most ostensibly snappy of hands, she doesn't telegraph the shot, she punches through the target. And Sandy Ryan now has been switched on early. She will do, yes. She's going to have to uh, start fast because Farris does. She gets into a rhythm very quickly. You, know, you touch on it there, former two weight world champion. She's extremely experienced, very confident, almost annoyed that she's in here with a, with a free fight novice. You know, she really feels she's levels above. And you can see with the attitude, but I've been so impressed with Sandy Ryan, I really have. She's so aggressive, she's got every shot in her artillery, she, she's always thinking, and she's got that real spite and aggression. Yeah, that's exactly where the vulnerability to the uppercut comes in, as you say. I guess a symptom of kind of her style, but also being 37 years of age now, the feet do slow a little bit, and you know the edge in youth freshness, and probably desire if this gets really, really tough. Ball. We'll sit with Sandy Ryan, she's going to have to show more than that tonight. So far, it's been a patient start. She's not completely in control of the contest, but she's just edging his early exchanges. That was a good left hook from Farias. Ryan responds, one, two, left hook. And now they stand and trade as we thought they would. There's that lovely left to the body. Beautiful left hook to the head, but back comes Farias. Good work. And now they sit down and let their hands go into the third. And after a couple of rounds of feeling out process, it just catches fire for the first time. I wonder what both would have made of those exchanges. Both landed cleanly. Sandy Ryan arguably just having the better of the exchanges, putting her hands together. Telling the two to listen for the break. Two strange hooks. Big right hook. Barris had the better of that exchange. Worked the body well, chopped the right hand over the top two. That was a lovely long wide right hook. Farrier took it well, Sandy Ryan. Sandy needs to start pushing the pace now. Starting to get towards that unknown territory. Of course, she went six against Kirsty Babington, but she's never been further than that in a professional ring. And in that fight, she was so, so dominant from start to finish, picking her off and boxing, fighting when she felt like it. But this is going to test her in different ways. And I have to remember that just three years ago, she pushed Jess McCaskill so hard, Farias, and she was beaten in both of those fights, one by unanimous, one by majority decision, but she really had her moments, and, and when you do stand in front of her like yeah. this, and that's what McCaskill found, and Michaela Meyer early as well. But it is here, Chris. She's, she's looking for that cat to count the left hook to head and body, but what she's doing, she's just getting overwhelmed at times. She's letting Farias throw shots. You've got to be busy as well. You can't rely on that one shot, and Farias definitely getting better at the exchanges there. where you need to poke the jab out. Sandy Ryan just looking to exchange, looking for that left hook again. It's scrappy, it's exciting, but... And, he's, and, and you know, Farris has got this uncanny nick that knack of, of dragging people into her kind of fight and how she does it. And but that's experience, Chris, just knowing how to drag opponents in. You know, let your hands go, sort of getting close, tie, tie your opponent up, get one hand under under and throw the, the, the other, you know, very, very smart. He baits him in with this relaxed yeah, exactly. rhythm and then lets the hands go, catches you with unorthodox shots. They're not quick, but there's very little tell in them. Sometimes that offbeat rhythm can be really hard to, to read and to, to time, and again, she just lands a left hook. She's going to tidy up a little bit here, Sandy Ryan, get behind that jab. She's just getting a bit scrappy, trying to exchange far too much with Farris. I feel she feels that she can hurt Farris if she lands that left hook. Two good left hooks to the body there for Sandy Ryan, but 
but she needs to get behind that jab. Oh, they're good body shots, though. She's felt those barriers. Shots. And 37 is her resistance, what it was. She just takes a step off and maybe at a sign that she felt those under the elbow. Oh, she's really, really hurting her with that left to the body. This is good stuff from Sandy Ryan. Good pressure, hands down. You can see the confidence. She'll be learning so much in this, Andy Ryan, from an opponent like Farias, who works two good bodies and comes back up with the uppercut there. She's on the retreat now. That size and power is evident. Halfway through this seventh round. She's got blood above the right eye of Sandy Ryan. Hard to see what that's come from, or whether there is a, just a nick above the right eye. Trying to get a closer look at that in between the round. That's one, two there from Farias through the middle. And some blood from the, uh, the collar, the top of the strap of Farias as well. And it's blood just from the nose of Sandy Ryan. And with a few uppercuts through the middle, she just rips her own left hook to the body. Farias responds, though. And this is exactly what she does. And couldn't have expected anything different. But dealing with it is uh, a matter unto itself. Really exciting stuff when they both let their hands go. Good left hook from Farias, looks for it again. And that's a couple, another really close round, another competitive round. Farias, as she has done in the last three or four, started the round fast, getting the attention of the judges and, more importantly, getting the attention of Sandy Ryan. Mitchell said, now we have to go. Wants her to put her foot down and try and make a dent in the former two-weight world champion. Ryan holding her feet, sitting down on the one-two. Farias oh, takes it well, and they trade hooks. And Great it's all action. systems go here in Nottingham. Ryan oh, fizzing that left again under the elbow. Good double left hook from Sandy Ryan, head body. But she just held her feet too long, and the, the shot from Farrier's come winging in. She got caught with a left hook. Both corners, that familiar cry from Clifton Mitchell of Let's Get Medieval. Sandy Ryan knows she has to win this round. Erica Farias, the way she started, believes it too. It could be all in the balance here. Yeah, exactly, it could all be on this last round. Ryan letting the hands go. Is this just where you feel oh. desire? Big one too from Farias. He's the deciding factor as Erica Farias still got the desire left. And the referee telling them that leading with the head is not going to deduct a point, is he? No. Not at this stage of a contest, so That's competitive. Hard. Well, no doubt there'd be a side of, of despair at home because we would hate for that to ruin a, a really really good competitive contest on the cards but that has swung things in Sandy Ryan's favour considerably Darren if she wins this round now that she, could be absolutely she needs crucial to take advantage of this oh, point big work. and now Farias oh. knows she's got to do something big she lets the hands go wins the exchange huge shot from Farias there left and right really winging them in so You've got to try and claw his back, Chris. Yeah, whatever happens at, at the final belt, it's just got the, the feeling of a fight that may need to be run back, and I think both fighters will apply. Sandy Ryan in the fight of her life here. Farias has dragged things back over the last four or five rounds, had a really good spell, started the rounds quickly, put Ryan under pressure, stood and traded with her, and Ryan's been there for the return. Left up from Ryan, right hand over the top from Farias, digs away up close, chips away at the middle. I'm so impressed with Farias. You know, at the halfway point, I thought Sandy Ryan might be taking over with that size and youth. But back comes Farias. She's really been impressive, not stopped, letting her hands go. Really dragged Sandy Ryan into a fight she didn't want to be in. Ten seconds of an enthralling back and forth encounter. Both 
We feel they've done enough. Farias, though, finishing strongly in this what final round. But with the point deduction, just what will that do to the cards? Clifton Mitchell brings a fighter in, and, well, you're not going to get matched much tougher than that. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds here in Nottingham, we go to the judges' scorecards. Michael Alexander, 97-93, Ryan. Steve Gray, 97-94, Badius. And Bob Williams scored this contest 95-94 to for your winner by split decision. David Reyes, Buenos Aires, Argentina, La Pantera, Erika, Anabella, Farias. Ryan Camp despondent, they knew it was high risk. We felt that Farias had just done enough and it was really the point deduction in the last round that was potentially going to edge things, Sandy Ryan's way or even...